the United States built walls. For decades, these weren't just walls of sanctions, but invisible fortresses built of patents, licensing agreements, and closed ecosystems. A system designed to ensure the world paid a constant digital tribute to Silicon Valley. But China found a door in that fortress. And what just slipped through wasn't a whisper. It was a flood. The dam of American technological dominance is now cracking wide open. While Washington was busy drafting the next round of blacklists, convinced of its own invincibility, China quietly found a weapon that no sanction could touch, no export control could block, and no patent lawsuit could challenge. And the wildest part? The weapon China used was completely legal, born right inside the United States itself. If you think this is just about one company or one chip, you're missing the tectonic plates shifting beneath the global order. The consequences aren't some far-off geopolitical theory. They are surging into the code that runs your phone, the processors that drive your car, and the servers that hold your data. This isn't just about where your devices are assembled. It's about who writes the fundamental digital DNA for the 21st century, and who is freed from the digital vassalage the world has lived under for 50 years. And if what's happening right now continues, it's not just American chip supremacy that's slipping away. It's the very concept of global control, enforced through technology, that is becoming obsolete. While U.S. policymakers escalated their economic warfare in 2023, arrogantly believing they could command the world's most complex supply chain to bend to their will, Chinese engineers executed a masterful flanking maneuver. They sidestepped the entire battlefield. Instead of chasing a forbidden technology they were locked out of, they embraced a revolutionary concept called RISC-V. To understand why this move is a geopolitical earthquake, you first have to understand the gilded cage America had built. For decades, designing a high-performance chip meant you had two choices, both leading to American-controlled toll booths. You could go to Intel's x86 or Britain's Arm. This was like trying to open a restaurant. You could either be a McDonald's or a Burger King. In both cases, you used their brand, their secret recipes, you were forbidden from changing the core menu, and you paid a constant, hefty franchise fee for the privilege. This system ensured billions flowed to a handful of Western corporations, while limiting true innovation for everyone else. It was a technological stranglehold, and the world had no choice but to accept it. Risk v changed the game. It is like someone posting the secret formula for Coca-Cola online for free and telling the world. Go make your own soft drinks. Call them whatever you want. Keep all the profits. China didn't just download the recipe. They are building the world's biggest and most advanced bottling plants. According to Nikkei Asia, Alibaba's T-Head unit already has a 5 nanometer RISC-V AI chip, a direct challenge to NVIDIA's dominance in a field America thought it owned. Meanwhile, China's overall chip production surged an astonishing 63% year-over-year in 2024, as reported by Bloomberg. In an industry where single-digit growth is a victory, 63% isn't growth. It's a supernova, fueled by this newfound freedom. No patents infringed. No sanctions broken. A new playbook was being written in real time, using a chapter America itself had authored, then forgotten. What makes Risk v so explosively dangerous to the old guard isn't just that it's free. It's that it's viral. It demolishes the gatekeeping model that America used to maintain control. It allows anyone, from a garage startup to a global superpower, to design their own processors without asking for permission. Without pouring billions into U.S. firms, China can now scale this architecture across every conceivable device, from smart cities to its next generation of military hardware. Of course, the skeptics in Silicon Valley, comfortable in their long-held dominance, have a counter-argument. Freedom leads to chaos. They predict the RISC-V world will fragment into a digital tower of Babel, a thousand incompatible standards that go nowhere. But this is where they fundamentally misunderstand Beijing's real strategy. China isn't just participating in this open source movement, it's actively corralling it. Through massive state funding, university programs, and by making its own RISC-V standards the most advanced and easiest to adopt for commercial use, Beijing is becoming the de facto leader of this decentralized army. It's turning the world's desire for freedom from American tech control into a unified force under its own quiet guidance. And the grand irony? Washington's own hubris lit the fuse. The U.S. sanctions, intended to be a precise chokehold to freeze China's progress, misfired spectacularly. 
They didn't act like a wall, they acted like a crucible. Because pressure and heat don't always crush. Sometimes they forge steel. The Wall Street Journal reports that between 2022 and 2025, China injected over $140 billion into its domestic chip firms. To put that in perspective, that's more than the entire Apollo program that sent humanity to the moon, adjusted for inflation. This isn't an industrial policy. It's a national crusade, born out of necessity. Companies like SMIC, backed by this war chest, re-engineered older equipment to produce 7 nanometer chips without the forbidden EUV machines, a feat Western analysts had smugly deemed impossible. Far from isolating China, the export bans forced a brutal but rapid adaptation, fostering an ideological shift toward a self-sufficiency that now threatens to surpass the West. The pressure campaign didn't stall China. It hardened its resolve. Even America's staunchest allies are taking note. South Korea and Germany are now quietly expanding their own R&D funding for risk-V alternatives, hedging against future volatility from Washington. It's a quiet vote of no confidence in America's leadership. But Beijing isn't just building a defensive fortress. It's building a new global system. By weaponizing risk vs openness, China is exporting a new model of technological sovereignty. In 2024 alone, it signed 65 cross-border deals with nations in the global south. The pitch is powerful and aimed directly at the heart of American hegemony. For decades, your digital destiny has been decided in California. Your data flows to servers in Virginia. You pay royalties to American corporations who can cut you off at any time. We offer another way. You don't need to be a digital colony anymore. Build your own future with our tools. This is a rebellion against digital colonialism. And while Washington remains fixated on protecting its existing monopolies, China is racing into uncharted territory. In late 2024, Alibaba's Demo Academy announced a commercially viable neuromorphic chip. Tsinghua University unveiled a prototype for quantum secure processors. This isn't about catching up anymore. This is about vaulting into arenas where the U.S. has no established fortress. While Washington is still defending the last hill, China is trying to colonize a new planet. This brings us to the most uncomfortable truth of all, a truth that strikes at the heart of American power. For a century, that power was about owning the factories, the patents, the supply chains, and controlling the global standards bodies like the IEEE. That era is ending. True control isn't about owning the factory. It's about who writes the standards that the factories must follow. By mid-2025, RISC-V processors captured 19% of the global market, with projections hitting 26% by 2026. This is no longer a fringe movement. Even more alarmingly for Washington, the RISC-V International Consortium has moved its headquarters to Switzerland, a neutral territory explicitly chosen to escape American regulatory overreach. It was a direct response to the weaponization of U.S. law. And that is the quiet horror for Washington. Even if America builds the world's most advanced factories, it may wake up to find it's just a master builder, working on an architectural blueprint written by its greatest rival. This is how a great power falls. Not in a single loud battle, but through a thousand quiet withdrawals, through the arrogance of believing its dominance was permanent, until one day it realizes the world it once led is now taking instructions from someone else. China didn't just win a race for a better chip. It's building the operating system for the next global economy. But the chip is just the hardware foundation. The real end game, the final move in this chess match, is what you build on top of it. And what Beijing is designing next isn't just an app store or an operating system. They are architecting a new digital silk road, powered by their own blockchain infrastructure, their own central bank digital currency, and an international payment system designed to be completely independent of the US dollar and the SWIFT network. A world where America's most powerful economic weapon, the financial sanction, becomes as obsolete as a wooden ship in the age of the aircraft carrier. And that financial reset is a story for next time.